It's the Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert, coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. An Ecuadorian judge issued an arrest warrant for former President Rafael Correa last week. The warrant is meant to place Correa into preventative detention, while a case against him is being pursued for having allegedly supported the 2012 kidnapping attempt of Fernando Balda, a political opponent of Correa's. Balda was on the run from Ecuadorian justice and living in Colombia at the time of the kidnapping attempt. Upon issuing the arrest warrant, the Ecuadorian judge also requested a so-called Interpol red alert against Correa so that he can be detained and extradited from Belgium, where he currently resides. Correa has rejected the persecution, saying that it is entirely political. Here's an excerpt from an interview he conducted in Brussels right after the arrest warrant was issued. What does the President of the Republic have to do with this event? At the beginning, I wasn't even accused. It happened in 2012. In 2013, the alleged victim presented a specific accusation and didn't accuse me. But already in November, they realized that with false testimonies, they could point to the President. And they announced from this moment on, you will see Correa will get an arrest warrant from Interpol. And they started this whole thing, which has no legal or logical basis. Joining me now to take a closer look at Correa's arrest warrant and the larger political context in Ecuador is Guillaume Long. Guillaume was foreign minister under Rafael Correa from 2016 to 2017, as well as Ecuador's ambassador to the UN in Geneva, but resigned last January because of political differences with Moreno administration. Thanks for joining us again, Guillaume. Thank you, my pleasure. So people in Ecuador who argue that the case against Korea is a political persecution say that there are many irregularities in this case. Let's take a, take a look at some of those claims. Now, first of all, there's the issue of the evidence itself. Uh, the kidnapping attempt against Bada was ultimately unsuccessful, and he was later extradited to Ecuador and served a two-year prison sentence. Um, but what's the evidence exactly against Korea uh, that he ordered uh, or somehow participated in the uh, organization of the kidnapping of uh, Balda in 2012. Okay, well, I think there's a much greater context here, but if we are to focus on the specifics of the case, uh, there is no ev evidence at all whatsoever. What there is is uh, someone, a police sergeant, who claims to have spoken directly to the president about this. Uh, this is someone who was involved, apparently, in an alleged uh, kidnapping incident of uh, Balda, uh, I mean, it does sound a little bit kind of strange, to put it mildly, that the president of the republic would speak directly to a police sergeant to order him to kidnap someone without going via anybody else, because nobody else has been accused uh, as yet. I mean, not the minister of interior at the time, not the head of the police, not any kind of senior or semi-senior ranking officer in the police force. It's just the president. And this very minor sergeant, nobody had heard of until very recently, who says he spoke personally to Correa. So I don't know whether that stands as evidence, but it's the only grounds on which they've, uh, well, the judge, uh, first obviously the attorney general, and then the judge have gone on for uh, this pretrial detention, which they've been now uh, declared with what you've just narrated, the uh, red alert from Interpol that has been, uh, or were, We'll see whether it actually gets activated, but it's been solicited. Um, other than that, I can't see any any uh, evidence. And I think that the uh, allegations that this has to do with political persecution and with uh, stopping or avoiding a, a return, a political return of Korea of any sort, uh, and actually the physical mobility of Korea, you know, stopping him from going to Ecuador, but also hampering his travels, is basically the main uh, political aim behind uh, this accusation and this uh, preventative uh, prison uh, or pretrial detention order. I actually want to get into the larger context in a minute, but before we do, I just also want to ask about uh, what do you think of the process? That is, another major question that has been raised is uh, the procedures. Uh, that is, the questions have been raised about um, and the independence of the attorney general, the legality of preventative detention in this case, uh, and uh, also that um, that that uh, that uh, the charges uh, have been brought against a former president uh, need to be brought through the legislature, which uh, doesn't seem to have happened. What do you make about this uh, of the procedures? 
Yeah, well, it's irreg irregularities across the board. Maybe we'll have a chance to go back to the referendum in uh, January 2018, uh, a few months ago, which actually uh, some of us denounced as, you know, a referendum that would enable, and we're seeing it now, uh, this type of political prosecution. But yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, first of all, to take a pre former president to court, you need the go-ahead of the legislature. You need the go-ahead of the National Assembly of Parliament, of Congress. Uh, this was not, this has not happened. Uh, a sort of makeshift majority in Congress uh, of a lot of right-wing parties allied to the current sort of dissidents of Alianza País who are allied to uh, President Moreno, uh, voted not to deal with the issue, as in not to vote on the issue, not to decide whether uh, President Correa could be trialed, uh, tried or not. Uh, so they kind of uh, evaded the uh, responsibility as such, which then enabled the Attorney General to go for it, to say, well, if Parliament is not, doesn't, doesn't have an opinion on this, uh, I'm going go, to go for it. So obviously it was a way of, without voting in favor of the trial to take place, it was a way for the for enabling the trial to happen, the court case to happen. So that's the first irregularity. Another irregularity you also hinted at is the fact that the Attorney General has been is not been named according to what the law and the Constitution mandates. So he's a temporary sort of uh, he's been put in charge temporarily, uh, and he's been named by this kind of again a makeshift. Uh, board of uh, citizens participation, uh, a council of citizens participation, it's called, which itself has been named by President Moreno. And all this comes from the referendum of January 2018. Uh, but the def definitive attorney general, the, the attorney general who will win the, uh, there's sort of, sort of a, a contest in Ecuador, and then the, there's a points mechanism, and then whoever wins the contest becomes attorney general. This, is not, this contest has not happened. We've got someone who's just a caretaker, and it is this caretaker, attorney general, that's uh, also very close to uh, the right and very close to the current president who has uh, brought these charges against, against President Correa. So then here again, it really you know, smells very strongly of uh, political persecution. And then finally, the, 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 the pretrial detention order itself, which of course uh, was based on when the judge received the case, the judge ordered for President Correa, who is a resident in Belgium, who doesn't even live in Ecuador, to present himself physically uh, to her to, 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 to visit the judge in, in charge of this case every fortnight. So every two weeks, President Correa, ex-President Correa, would have had to travel from Belgium to Ecuador. I mean, it's insanity. It's just, you know, it's clearly uh, uh, aimed at uh, pushing him to a situation where he would be in breach of that, uh, of that order. And so and 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 therefore then be able to uh, declare this pretrial detention, and it's exactly uh, what uh, what's happened. Uh, Correa said he could go to the consulate, to the Ecuadorian consulate in Belgium, that he could go every fortnight. Even that was an exaggeration. Everybody agreed with this, but he said, "Okay, I'll go to the consulate." And in fact, he went to the consulate when the time was up, and he said, "Here I am, you know, the Ecuadorian authorities." I'm, but he can't travel if he's a resident in Belgium. And it's actually in breach of his you know, human rights and sort of migratory law all over the place would, 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 uh, would condemn this. Uh, he couldn't travel every fortnight to Ecuador to present himself in front of the judge. So the judge then said, oh, well, since there's a no-show, since President Correa hasn't showed up, despite the fact that he's been summoned here every fortnight, I will therefore uh, uh, declare this kind of pretrial uh, detention order. So it was all sort of it had all been fabricated. We all, we'd been discussing it from, from from the people who were close to uh, uh, Rafael Correa had been discussing it. We knew it was going to happen. We knew that on that date, the judge was going to announce uh, his pretrial uh, detention order. Uh, and that it was part of the of the scenario, of the political uh, scenario that uh, the, uh, the, op his, the people who are after him, the people who are persecuting him, had uh, worked out from, from the beginning. So finally, I want to do to uh, turn to the issue of the political uh, yeah, context in which this is happening. <clears throat> and perhaps you, you can also comment on this uh, report that uh, JP Morgan 
issued. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but they say, let me just quote a line from it. <clears throat> they say that Moreno's, a quote, Moreno's sense of political strength is a relevant variable in this ultimate decision to sign off any recommendation to embrace an IMF program. A current court case against ex-president Korea for allegedly directing a 2012 kidnapping of a political opponent could impede Moreno's chief political opponent from coming back to Ecuador from his current location in Belgium and also weaken the Correista bloc in the National Assembly. So in other words, they're saying that, that is the JP Morgan analysis is saying that that uh, the prosecution of Korea will help uh, Moreno get an IMF loan. What do you, how do you make sense of this? I mean, and how does this fit into the larger political developments in Ecuador at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I would say three things about this. First of all, I mean, I resigned in January being uh, President Moreno's ambassador in the UN in Geneva uh, on basically because I believe several things would happen and I didn't want to be a part of this. Uh, the first thing I denounced was that uh, the referendum that Moreno was organizing would basically create uh, a situation whereby he would be able to name the judicial authorities, the different authorities of, of that exert con various types of, of checks and balance in, in, in Ecuador's uh, system of, of justice. And, 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 and we're seeing this now with Moreno having named this kind of uh, council of, of citizens' participation, which then itself is named uh, all those the, the, the senior judges, the people in charge of the magistrature, the the people who the, the attorney general who's just accused Correa, etc. Et so there's real control over Moreno um, on behalf of Moreno over the, judi the judiciary, the different audit mechanisms, all the different checks and balances of the state, and. This is something that I was against in January, so I renounced saying that this was going to happen. And of course, now it's happening. And we're seeing that the consequence of this is the persecution of the political opposition to the Moreno regime, and particularly the people who have been around Correa, Correa himself, of course, at the center of this, because what they don't want is a return of Correa, because the elites are back in power, because the right, the very conservative uh, right wing uh, forces, political parties and, and, and forces are back in power, and they want Korea out of the political scenario. As it stands, he can't stand again as president, but he could still be a leading political figure in Ecuador. He could run for mayor, he could do a number of that, for MP, for, he could do a number, he could still be a political leader in Ecuador, and don't want that to happen. So they need him, I don't necessarily think they want him in jail, but they need him far away in Belgium with some trumped up charges that the Belgium government probably in all realism, I would say, well, there will not be an extradition uh, of, of Correa to, to Ecuador because the charges are so ludicrous. But certainly, uh, it creates this kind of stalemate whereby Correa is isolated and cannot go back to Ecuador. So a clear case of political persecution. The second thing I, 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 I predicted and I think is, is happening, and it kind of goes to, your, to what you're saying, is that Moreno would lose his majority, obviously, the MPs that are in Parliament basically have divided. A lot of them have remained loyal to Correa. A few of them have remained uh, sort of semi-loyal to Moreno, although in the voting patterns we're not seeing a lot of loyalty there. But certainly Moreno doesn't have a party. He's on his own. He's loathed by who, the people who are supportive of Correa. And he's not particularly liked by the right wing, who have basically used him to get rid of Correa, but they don't have any specific affinity or loyalty towards him. So he's kind of caught in the sandwich, whereas where the only way he can govern and the only ally, potential allies he has are on the right. Uh, those, people support, those people on the right supported him when he was getting rid of, of Correa. Now that he's kind of done that or seriously on the way of doing that, uh, the only thing he can offer the right is extremely conservative, right-wing, deregulating, neoliberal policies. And we're seeing a number of laws going through Congress, one big one that just went, went through, uh, that are kind of uh, part of this deregulation agenda. Um, and I think we're going to see more in the future and key ministerial posts going to the right, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, the IMF's comment Goes in that is, is in, goes in that direction. We have a weak president who doesn't have a, a popular base of support, whose popularity in the polls is plummeting, and is having to cling on to the right, particularly the right in in, in parliament, the national assembly, in Congress, uh, who are pushing their hardcore fundamentalist uh, neoliberal agenda in order to deconstruct everything that Correa did. So, I mean, we have to be careful because some reports of the IMF, uh, depending on the department you look on 
praised the Korea years because of the macroeconomic stability, the growth, the diversification. But then, uh, obviously, you have uh, this particularly, uh, well, JP Morgan and, and different uh, banks that look at uh, the possibility of an IMF loan as uh, going towards even more deregulation of the Ecuadorian economy and kind of opening up to, to I think, in an irresponsible way uh, to capital. Uh, without looking at the potential macroeconomic costs that would entail, and of course, as always, the huge social costs that opening up to conditioned and conditional IMF loans has meant for Ecuador and for Latin America. Okay. Well, we're going to have to leave it there for now, but we're going to continue following the situation. I was speaking to Guillaume Long, former foreign minister under Rafael Correa and former ambassador to the UN in Geneva under President Lenin Moreno. Thanks for having joined us uh, again today, Guillaume. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. Also, I'd like to remind you we are in the midst of our summer fundraiser and need your help to reach our goal of raising $200,000. Every dollar that you donate will be matched. And unlike practically all other news outlets, we do not accept support from governments or corporations. Please do what you can today.